guys welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you guys are doing really well i know it's been a while since i last posted but as promised i wanted to share with you guys the process and my experience of getting my permanent residency here in slovenia as an expat from Hello england you guys who don't know i am pregnant so i do sound probably out of breath because i am so bear with me i have some energy today that's why i'm filming so hopefully you guys find this helpful so another thing is guys this is going to be more of a story rather than a step-by-step -step procedure of what to do just because um, there are a lot of different aspects and points that I want to mention and that involves me telling the whole story rather than just telling you go here and go do that. Because I know I'm going to get a lot of comments of people asking me what should I do, do I need this, do I need that and honestly I don't know. I've just done my own research and you know been persistent and consistent with finding um, what I need and eventually I've got them in the end so I highly suggest you do the same just because this is not legal advice this is just my experience and I hope you guys find a way to get your permanent residency because honestly what I've learned while living here in Slovenia is that it depends who you go to and where you go to get your information someone's going to tell you something different so that's why I can't really help you guys out when you guys ask me questions about you know do I need this document do I need that document because it's always something different and I will share that in my little story so I am an expat from England I still have my England citizenship I just had temporary residency here in Slovenia and also I have married a Slovenian which makes life easier so um, I've been living here for three years now and you can apply for permanent residency if you're married to a Slovene and it's been three years and it has for me. Um, if you're not married to a Slovenian then you do have to wait the full five years and then you can apply. Also let me mention I did not take a language test because I probably would fail anyways. Uh, my Slovene is still a working process so yes I did not need to take a language test as of now when I'm filming this it might change in the future so let me mention I think I was the first expat British expat to apply for permanent residency post Brexit um, in my municipality because literally the lady was dusting away the fingerprint scanner and also she mentioned it so yeah we really knew with everything as you can imagine post Britex so the first thing I did was contact the Operata Inota hopefully I pronounced that correctly um, it's the administration unit in your municipality I highly recommend you get someone who speaks Slovene to contact them if you're not confident um, especially because I do not live in Ljubljana let me mention not everybody outside of Ljubljana speaks English who work in the administration units because there are um, older generations there as well and that was the case for me so when I would call um, most of the time nobody would understand what I'm saying so I would just get my husband to call for me and he asked the person what documents do I need to apply and this was around April, May time. I'm not very good with dates because I do have baby brain, let me mention. They didn't really know what documents I needed post Brexit um, and they didn't really give us any information to wait um, a week or two and then call again. Maybe we get you know through to somebody else. Maybe they would find some more information, who knows. And I did also look on the government website. So I had a roundabout idea of what I might need. Um, so anyhow, we called them again and finally the lady did say she had some information and she told me, well she told my husband that I needed a criminal record check, so not the DBS check which you normally get for if you're applying for a job involving minors, if you're looking after kids and stuff like that. So it's not that, it was a certificate you need which actually is a physical copy they send you. You do have to pay for it, it was about £60 I had to pay and I will include the link to the website for that because I know some people were confused um, who were asking me before where do they get the police certificate from. 
So I needed that and I needed that to be translated. All the documents I was reading online as well had to be valid um, within three months. That's what I read online. So yeah, keep that in mind. So that I needed a, um, obviously a photo for my new residency card. I needed my passport, my old residency card, which would be my old residency card once I got my new one. And this was the big one, whether I needed a apostle stamp. It's an official stamp which tells them that, you know, this is an official document. It's not nothing fake or anything like that. And that is when the whole little issue started. Okay, okay so after the lady had told me on the phone, uh, well, told my husband all the documents that I need and everything like that, I went on my merry way and I got um, my police certificate, which I applied for online and paid for online and they sent it to my house um, from the UK. And also I went to go get it translated from um, a person that we know because we also had to have a translator at our wedding. So we asked the same lady if she could translate translate the document that we need. So she did that for us and everything. And then here's where I got all confuzzled. Basically, I didn't know if I needed an official apostle stamp. I read online. Here's where you shouldn't always read what is online because it varies for every person. I read online that you do require that. So then me there stressing and I obviously um, I was like, what do I do now? Because the lady didn't tell me that. And when I spoke to her, she didn't know either. So there's me thinking that my document's gonna expire because it needs to be within three months, my police document. So I was thinking if I need to send this back now, to um, the UK to get this stamped, that might take long, and then to receive it again, and then it might expire by then. So there's me panicking, and obviously I was newly pregnant then, so there's me getting all emotional about it, literally. And then I asked people on the expat group. So there is an expat group if you're here in Slovenia, and there's wonderful people on there who help you out if you've got any questions. So I did ask on there, like, do you need the stamp? And somebody told me that you can go to Ljubljana. I do not live in Ljubljana. I live outside of Ljubljana. And they told me that you can go to Ljubljana and they will stamp the document for you. And they said that they got it stamped. So then I traveled all the way with my husband to get that stamped. And when we went there, basically the lady said to me, we do not stamp um, documents which are not from Slovenia which of course makes sense. So then that was a waste of journey and I was getting all emotional about it because I was like, now I'm gonna to have to send this document off and it's gonna take forever and probably all my stuff's gonna expire. And then I spoke to the guy who mentioned this um, on the expert group and he said that's what it was like for him. Then we called the administration unit and they still weren't sure. Then finally, we decided to actually go with all my documents, with whatever I had just before um, it expired because I was getting really worried that if it expired, then what am I going to do? And at the time, my husband wasn't able to come with me because he was at work. So I took my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law does not speak English. If you're wondering how we communicate, this is where Google Translate comes in. So yeah, my husband anyway explained to my mother-in-law why I'm going there and what um, information I need and all that. So we went there and my mother-in-law spoke to the lady and told her, you know, we're applying for my permanent residency. And basically she made a copy of all my documents. And then she asked me for um, a bank statements from the last six months. This is something they never told me over the phone. And also um, my contract for the past two years for work. They also didn't ask me for that. Luckily, I had my contract available with me, but I didn't have a bank statements available. So I had to go to the bank and then come back to the administration unit for her to make copies of that. So finally, she made copies of everything. And then she said to me, I will need to speak to the guy at the top who deals with um, applications for permanent residency. 
So literally, we went upstairs, gave him all my documents. He was speaking in Slovene to my mother-in-law, and I did request him if he could speak English, because of course, I need to know what's happening and what I will need to do. So then he did speak English, and he told me, we're not sure if you need the Apostle stamp. And he was going to contact Ljubljana, but I already had spoken to Ljubljana. And I will need the official stamp, but done by the UK, not by Slovenia. Um, so I was already in the back of my head thinking, you know, what am I going to do? My documents are going to expire, etc, etc. So he gave me all my documents back and he told us to wait until he gets contacted back about what to do. So then we literally were waiting a month and my husband was contacting contacting him every um, week or so to see what's happening. But apparently the whole office of Ljubljana was going on holiday at that time. So there was nobody available and nobody responding to calls. But he did put me as priority, but he said it wouldn't be really a problem because I've already got my temporary residency and I'm married to a Slovene. So it wouldn't really be a problem getting my permanent residency. But the worrier I am, I was like, I want everything sorted because I'm really um, anxious about sending documents back and forth. It like takes time. And plus, I was newly pregnant and, you know, all my hormones were everywhere. Anyhow, that aside, finally, he contacted us and um, he said, you do not need the apostle stamp. So I was so happy about that. Um, I was a bit confused that some people did need it. So anyhow, we went back. So this time I went with my husband and she didn't uh, take the copies of the bank statement. She didn't need that anymore. Neither did she need my work contract. All she did take from me was my um, criminal record check, which actually did expire over the three months required. Like it's still valid document, but they always say, you know, it needs to be valid within three months. Well, that went over three months, but she took it anyways. And the translation, my passport, she made a copy of that, my photo and a copy of my residency card. And she also took my fingerprint, which I mentioned before. They were literally dusting it off to take my fingerprint. And she took all of that. And then, um, yeah. I just had to wait, which I did for about a month, I would say. I'm not good with dates, but yes, I think it was a month. And then I finally got a text message. By the way, guys, I'm filming it now when you have to take, get tested to go to any administration unit, hospital, um, anything other than getting food, you have to get tested if you're not vaccinated. So yes, I had to go get tested before I can go pick up my uh, residency card because I got a, um, a message saying that I could come collect my residency card. So I did and basically then she told me um, I have to also get a document signed by the house owner giving me permission to live in the house. So then I had to um, basically go home, get that signed. And then the next day, because it was closing, I had to go back, give her my document and also pay 12 euros to get my little card. And then I got my card and that's my long story. Me, that is how I got my permanent residency. So I'm really happy and glad that finally I have you know, got my residency is off my mind. I hope you guys get your residency if you're applying. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If I do know the answer, I will help you guys out. If I don't, I may not leave a comment just because I don't want to give you the wrong information. And like I went out on a goose, you know, a wild goose chase looking for um, certain things and then something else happened. I don't want you to go through the same thing. So I'd rather you do your own research and find out and please contact your administration unit. Everything's always different. I'll see you, know. you guys in another video. Bye.